Since sharing this piece, I have actually had quite a few questions on my process. And funny enough, I actually started this piece back in 2020, but I actually have those videos. So I figured I would do my best to kind of walk you through my process. One of the things that I can tell you about this piece is that I'm using the Maz Epoxy's tabletop resin, and that's still the resin that I use most often today. And the majority of the pigments that I'm using are going to be the Mixol pigments, and those, again, are still my favorite to this day. This blue here is definitely a mica powder because it's got that shimmer in it, and then same with this purple. But the black that I had already laid down is the black Mixol mixed with the silver Mixol, and that blue is my favorite favorite ocean blue number 99 mix all i'll go ahead and i'll leave all of the mix alls that i know for a fact i used in the description because again i love those this fuchsia is amazing i mean come on um, but I know that I did mix a couple of different micas in here because the mica powders have that shimmer and the mix alls don't so this yellow here is so much brighter than the last yellow you saw because I did mix in some of the white mix all and the addition of the white is what's going to make you get those cool cells and that cool lacing that you see once you add the heat. And then here I am just adding some white by itself, which I think gives it some really good contrast. So I sped this part up quite a bit because I kind of mess around with these for a while. Here I am getting some kind of blob out of my resin, but I just kind of blended this around quite a bit. If I remember correctly at the time, I didn't actually want to get the lacing effect. I wanted it to look more like a Northern Lights kind of blended type of thing rather than the cells. But I ended up just kind of rolling with that. It ended up being really cool. So I don't regret that or anything. But if you're wondering why I blow out some of these cool looking cells, I think it was because at the time I didn't actually want those. So that actually brings me to a point I do feel like I should mention. At the time that I made this, it was just a total experiment. I kind of had an idea of what I was doing or what I wanted to accomplish, but realistically, I'm just kind of playing around here, playing with the fun color combination, adding more where I think it's necessary, blending things where I think it's necessary, but ultimately, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted it to look like, but really, I was just kind of trying something new. Another quick tip that I do want to mention is make sure when you're working on a resin piece like this that your work surface is level. You can see how my resin is kind of moving and clearly where I was working just wasn't very level. Luckily it all worked out, but it's easier if your surface is level. Um, this part I just sped up quite a bit so you can really see those cells start to form. And then in a minute you're going to see me blow those all out again because again, that wasn't actually my goal. But I do end up rolling with those and I'll show you some images of what it looked like after this first pour and then I'm going to do the second pour coming up. So that's where my video ended on this one, but here's some images of what that first pour looks like. Now that we're getting into pour number two, I want to point out the addition of my paint speckles as stars. I did that with spray paint. You just kind of hold the can in such a way that it splatters out paint rather than sprays. Unfortunately, I didn't record any of that, but I did want to mention that's how I did that. But now we are getting into the actual pour, so I will talk more about that. One thing you might notice is how much clear resin I'm using and how transparent my colors are. That is intentional because I want to add dimension to this piece without actually covering up the previous layer. One of the coolest things about epoxy is how much depth you can actually create just by layering the resin. Since when I previously recorded these videos, I wasn't really planning on doing a full tutorial. I didn't actually take any videos of me mixing my pigments into the resin. But one tip I can give you if you're trying to not go too heavy on the pigment is to, instead of dripping it right into your resin cup, drip a little bit on the side and use a popsicle stick to slowly mix it in. And you can kind of tell based on how much it coats the popsicle stick, how transparent it actually is. So as you can see in this video, I'm just kind of laying down colors where I think they might look nice and going at it with the heat gun to blow it out and let it kind of do its thing. And that's what really just kind of creates the cool cloudy effect and just kind of helps add to this galaxy that I was trying to accomplish. As I mentioned, this piece is just a total experiment, and that is realistically the best advice that I can give to you guys when it comes to epoxy in general. Don't be afraid to experiment with this and just play around and have fun with it, and don't be afraid to add those additional layers. This is layer two, and we are not done because we're going to be coming up on layer three here pretty soon. Here we are on to pour three, and I did add some more paint splatter stars because the dimension of those between layers is really cool. One thing I don't think I mentioned yet is that I usually wait until the next day to do my next pour. You're safe to do another layer of resin when the previous layer is dry to the touch. Even if it's a little bit soft, as long as it's not sticky, you're good to go ahead and pour. This layer is what was my final layer at the time of this project, and it's pretty much just a repeat of the last pour. 
although my colors are probably even more transparent this time around than they were last time. The purpose of this layer was really just to add that cool dimension and seal everything in. So next you're going to see me go in with my heat gun and after this you're actually going to see me using a different heat gun because that little orange tack life heat gun eventually ended up dying and I had to replace it but this is where I left this piece for almost three years until I finally pulled it out and decided it was time to finish it. Here we are almost a full three years later and I had finally decided it was time to finish this piece up and give it a new home. I start off by sanding the piece down with 220 grit and this is to make sure that the new layer of epoxy adheres properly. I know it looks cloudy but the fresh layer of epoxy will clear it right up. I like to measure my epoxy out by weight. If you go on the Maz Epoxy's website, there's a great calculator for this. If you put in the size and shape of your piece, it'll tell you exactly how much resin you need. The Lightning Bug pigment from Bearwood Supply is my favorite glow-in-the-dark pigment, and I like to mix it with the white mix-all. I just kind of guess on how much to put in, but one tip I can give you is to take the cup of resin before you pour it to a dark place and make sure that you are happy with how much it's glowing. Another thing that I want to mention is watch out for clumps in the glow-in-the-dark resin because if you get those, they're really obvious in the dark when the piece is glowing, and if you let those cure into the resin, there's really no way to get them out. As you can see, I am starting off with just clear clear resin and I'm coating the entire piece with that before I go in with any of the glow in the dark pigment. And I hit that really quick with the heat gun just to get any micro bubbles out. And now I'm just going in with my white and glow in the dark pigment mixture here and I'm just kind of layering it on where I think it will look good and blowing it with the heat gun just like I've pretty much done in the past. And as I mentioned before I do now have a different heat gun than I was using three years ago. Quick tip, it's always nice to have a pair of tweezers handy in case you find floaters in your resin. As you can see, I am adding another layer of white. This isn't totally necessary. I just thought I needed a little bit more. One thing I also want to mention is I know that at some point I had mixed some of the glow pigment in with just clear resin, no white, and I spread that in front of that yellow. I'm not sure why I didn't record that and I apologize, but that does help add to the glow. I also did not record it, but you can see that I taped around the edges so that the epoxy doesn't get on the sides of the piece. And here it is glowing in the dark. And here I am trying to take my tape off without adding any heat and you can see how well that's going. So in a minute you'll see it goes a little bit better once I hit it with the heat gun so you can see it's actually pulling off this time. So I highly recommend just hitting that with your heat gun and it usually will pull off pretty easily. Sometimes you get some pesky pieces that stick. One thing I do want to say is prior to adding this personalization, I did actually give this one more coat of epoxy. So it was just a clear layer, no colorant added at all, just all clear just to seal everything in and give it that final touch. I didn't bother to record that because until I had recently discovered that I had the recordings of the previous layers on this piece, I was never planning on making this into a tutorial. With that said, I didn't record any of the cutting of these letters. They're just laser cut acrylic and I sprayed them with clear coat to make them matte because I thought it would contrast nicely with the shiny epoxy. And after three years and a total of five layers of resin, this piece is all finished up and was a gift for my younger cousin for his birthday. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you found this helpful. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments. And please be sure to hit that subscribe button.